So let me demo a bunch of bots uh, that you can actually find in um, <clears throat> in the autopilot set of bots, right? So what I'm going to do now is uh, I'll start off with uh, showing off assistant bot. And the use case I'm showing now is with regards to, um, uh, you know, uh, making sure that uh, you need the equipment uh, from home, basically. So nowadays in this era, right, uh, previously, previously you needed equipment, you could just walk up to the IT guy. Uh, there was a physical way to communicate that you needed stuff. Uh, but now we are all working virtually. So how do you make sure your employees are getting their basic necessities, right, to do their, their essential work? Um, so here, uh, for example, uh, under IT, I, I click equipment provisioning. And you can see that I, I get a bunch of messages, right? And and here I can actually request for something that I need. So this is fairly typical. Uh, maybe I'll ask for a headset. I'm using one right now. Um, and you can see that I, I, a headset has been selected. So I'll just send this for approval. And cool. So it says that my request has been uh, has been set for approval. Uh, what's happening in the background is uh, a ticket has been created in ServiceNow for this headset. Uh, and what happens? What happened really quickly was uh, my manager uh, gets sent the approval request. He approved it, and then I get the confirmation that my request has been approved. So what's happening in the background here is uh, an order has actually been placed on Amazon, uh, and this information actually comes from. Uh, from the order request. And as we speak, this headset is on the way to me. So this is an example of how quickly, you know, you can you can request for, uh, you can perform a equipment provisioning that's completely self-service and, and the user doesn't have to um, interact with any IT uh, person at all. So these sorts of automations save a lot of time and save a lot of money. Cool, so uh, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, continue with the second use case. Uh, this is a PTO use case. So once again, I'll be using a system bot. And once again, this is all part of uh, the like uh, autopilot set of bots, right? Uh, the assistant bot in this case. Um, so you can use these for free uh, for the next six months. So over here, I'm gonna choose human resource uh, because I intend to submit a PTO request. So here I will choose uh, PTO. And what what the bot's doing now is it's uh, grabbing my information uh, in uh, Workday and it says that I have 110 days of leave. So I'll just say, yes, I'm gonna uh, apply for a PTO uh, today. So that's a period of one day and I'll submit the form. Uh, it says that my request has been sent and my manager's be, gonna be in touch with me. So what's happening in the background is there's a channel called PTO requests, and my manager is actually uh, uh, monitoring this this uh, this channel. So here I'm playing the part of the manager, approving or rejecting requests. So here I'm going to approve my request for one day off. And uh, you can see that I have a notification here, and it says that my PTO has been approved <clears throat> for the 26th of June today. <coughs> Excuse me. And yeah, it's been, it's, been, it's been approved and I have 109 days left. Um, yeah, so that's a simple PTO request, uh, well, a use case basically. So now we've been, we've been looking so far at stuff where um, like use cases where the, the flow has been initiated from teams. Now, what about a, a flow where the, the, the flow has been initiated um, externally, right? So um, this is especially, like important when uh when you know for like example like uh companies that monitor use tools like a uh, new relic uh, you know splunk to monitor uh their their cloud deployments so what i'm going to show here is a flow that is triggered from an external application instead of from teams so here's an example where an alert comes in from splunk and a ticket gets created for the ops team in service now and based on an escalation in Jira, um, you know, a war room can be created and, and an incident management, ma management team is invited to that. So I'm gonna trigger a Splunk alert and we'll see what happens. Okay, 
So I've triggered a Splunk alert. So what happens is um, I get an uh, so I get an event um, because I am part of the team uh, that receives events whenever there's an alert in Splunk. So uh, what happens in the background is uh, I get, uh, an, a service down incident is created uh, and a Jira issue is created based on certain uh, criteria as well as the Splunk ID. So I'm just going to quickly hop into um, the recipe that that's running this. So uh, this this uh, this Splunk alert actually triggers on uh, critical alerts only. And what happens is, you know, I uh, the playbook is usually you you get a uh, like a, an, a a P1 incident team to manage escalations, right? So what happens here is I'm looking for a, this group of people in service now, retrieving their user IDs and then uh, creating the incident uh, in service now, right? And uh, if it's critical, then I'll create an issue in Jira. Otherwise, I'll post a message to um, the folks in the incident team. So this is something that is pretty simple to do. Um, nothing fancy about this. Uh, and it can be done. And it, it's, it's quite powerful uh, because you can receive the alert on mobile, right? You don't have to be on your computer, sitting on your computer to receive this event. 